Hi there. I did not expect my spirituality to change much when I walked on to Belmont's campus four years ago. Growing up in the church, I really thought that I had all of the answers and that I already had everything figured out. My portrait of Christ was pristine, strong, clean cut, yet still kind of one-dimensional. And while he was loving and righteous, if I'm being honest with myself, he was also a bit high and mighty. Not long after coming to Belmont, however, I soon stumbled into experiences that would forever change my portrait of Christ. One of those experiences began when I met my best friend, Alla. We sat on uh, the floor of my dorm room and talked about our mutual love for East Africa and our desire to go there one day. So after our freshman year at Belmont, we hopped on a plane bound for Uganda to spend two months serving in a children's orphanage run by Watoto Child Care Ministries. It was here, really, for the first time that I encountered extreme poverty, where we saw children's, children with bellies bloated from hunger, cared for babies who'd been abandoned in dumpsters, and saw a country that was recovering from genocide and war. I had no idea how to reconcile the things I was witnessing there in Uganda with my life back here in Nashville. A second experience that began to shift and change my portrait of Christ occurred the summer after my sophomore year at Belmont, where I had the opportunity to go on a study abroad trip where we went to Israel, Palestine, Turkey, and Greece, going around and visiting different sites of the early Christian church. It was on this trip that I began to recognize the ways in which the Bible had been used to exclude and condemn people unless they held this certain set of beliefs. Viewing scripture as a list of bullet point rules to be followed, whatever the era, wherever you are. But I began to see that there is a much richer way to read the Bible. This new way of reading scripture was now causing me to engage issues of racism, homophobia, sexism, religious diversity, class, power, and oppression in a way that I never had before. For the first time, I began to recognize that my God truly is a God of love, despite how often the church fails to embody this. Shortly after returning to Belmont from the Holy Land, I joined a ministry that reaches out to the women and men who work in Nashville strip clubs each week, where we bring in a homemade meal to share. We try to build relationships with the women, serving as a loving, non-judgmental presence in their lives, and being available to connect them to community resources whenever needed. Because Nashville is in the Bible Belt, Every single woman in that club has encountered Christianity in some form or fashion, most of them having walked away wounded. Many of the women grew up in churches where they were either used and abused or they were condemned by the very people who were supposed to be pastoring them. Getting to know these women and hearing their stories over these past few years has has really forced me to confront the brokenness of my own religion, acknowledging that God cannot always be found within the walls of a church. Then, this past semester, as a part of Belmont's curriculum for senior social work majors, I've been interning at End Slavery Tennessee which is a nonprofit that works with victims of labor and sex trafficking. About half of the survivors we work with are younger than me, some being as young as four years old. Here, I've encountered women who've been shot, beaten, raped, bloodied, and abused in some of the most horrific and dehumanizing ways possible. Every single survivor we've worked with has a long history of trauma and abuse, enduring injustices and darkness beyond comprehension. As I heard the stories of these survivors, whatever was left of my childhood 
portrait of Christ died. But a new portrait began to emerge. A few weeks ago at my church, one of the pastors shared the story of St. Anthony's Monastery. Now, back in the 1500s, this monastery served as a hospital that specialized in caring for people with the plague or other skin diseases. In the entrance of the hospital hung this big painted portrait of Christ on the cross. Now, unlike many contemporary paintings of Christ, this portrait showed a sickly, almost disfigured portrait with open plague-like sores all over his body. The monks wanted the patient suffering from skin diseases to walk in and see that sickly, mangled, crucified Christ and to see themselves in that portrait, serving as a reminder that Jesus shared in their pain and in their suffering. I have needed that portrait of Christ as I've held and cared for precious babies who've been orphaned, as I've worked with men and women who are struggling with addictions that have cost them their health and their kids and their life, as I've worked with women whose voices have been silenced and the sins committed against them dismissed, I have needed a God who has suffered. A God whose last words up on that cross were, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Though I cannot reconcile or explain or even fully make sense of some of the things I have witnessed, I take comfort in knowing that my God is a God who has been beaten and bloodied and broken, left to die on a cross. My understanding of Jesus and my understanding of Christianity looks worlds different on this side of college. These past four years at Belmont have brought depth and even darkness into my understanding of who Christ is. The professors who've guided me and poured into me, the social work students who have taught me so much and who have loved me and supported me, the friends who have shared life with me, the experiences I've stumbled into, the sacred stories I've heard, all of these things have brought color and texture into my portrait of Christ. Coming to Belmont and encountering what I've encountered has really forced me to shed my pristine, high and mighty portrait of Christ that I once held. But in his place, I found myself coming to know the beauty of a God who shares in our pain and calls us alongside one another to help the oppressed and the wounded in this world. Thank you.